Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our May the 8th Zoom mini class. Um, I've got a really cool card to show you, and it's one of those cards that definitely looks more complicated than it actually is. And people who receive this card are going to absolutely love absolutely love what you make and they're going to be asking you how did you do that so for today we just need some basic supplies paper uh, we do need one piece that is a focal image i have played with my new salvage patina and created a couple little watercolor backgrounds that i'm going to stamp on uh, but if you just have pattern paper, that's okay. Or if you have a stenciled image, and you'll see what I mean as we go through that. And if you need me to take an extra couple of minutes so you can change up your plan, we can do that as well. Um, as always, this is being recorded, so it will be saved up onto YouTube that you can watch on replay. Uh, if you are watching live, please keep your microphone on mute. But if you have a question, definitely unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, I'm also going to just turn the chat on. So if you would rather type out your question, I'm keeping an eye on that as well. You can see a bit of my tripod. I'm sorry about that. I'm, but I will keep everything fo focused in here and we'll keep things moving along. Uh, if you are watching on replay, please pause, rewind, watch as many times as you want. Um, I have heard that many husbands are now very familiar with the sound of my voice. Uh, because you guys are watching this on replay. And uh, so hello to all the supportive and awesome husbands out there as well. All right, to get started, I'm going to start by cutting the piece of paper that I need for my card base. And with this one, because of the folds, we do need a 12 inch long piece of paper. Um, once you learn the mechanism, if you want to adapt it and use it with an eight and a half by 11, or if you want to change your sizing up, I don't think it would be too difficult to do, but for today's purposes, I wanted to keep it as close to a standard size card as possible. Um, and then we can always tweak from there. So I am using Basil Moody Blue. I'm going to cut my piece that's 12 inches long by five and a half inches tall. So it's still going to fit nicely in a standard size envelope. It's just going to be a little bit skinnier than your four and a quarter by five and a half once it's all folded. So just cut all the way through. And that's our main cutting done just to start. So I've got five and a half by 12. I do need to grab my scoreboard because our scoring is next. And once again, the scoring on this is fairly simple. If you want to watch first, I will walk through it and then I can walk through it again. And I will, I will explain to you how I got my measurements. So with this card, I know that I want two panels that are gonna be folding in towards the middle. And so my card is going to be four inches wide. So I started in my math, and you guys know I'm not strong with math, but I think some basic addition I can manage. I'm going to start at the four inch mark all the way down and at the eight inch mark. Because ultimately I'm taking my piece of paper and I am dividing it into thirds. So this is going to be my main card and these are going to be my two outside panels that fold in. So again, if you are trying, if you want to modify this later on to do an eight and a half by 11, you would just take your 11. If it were me, I'd get out my calculator and divide by three and use those measurements. So do it, let's say for argument, it's three and three quarters. I'm not sure that it is. I'm just picking numbers. I would do, I would score at three and three quarters. And then the second three and three quarters would be seven and a half, possibly. Anyways, math is not my strength. That's why I started with the 12 inch. So my thirds are four and eight. That was a really long explanation to get to four and eight. Just give them one last crease. Sherry is the right side up. Um, I've got, 
both my sides are the same. Okay. Um, I, I think you're supposed to fold into the mountain. So you probably want your wrong side up if you're using pattern paper. You yeah, thanks. Um, all right, so now we've got our thirds. We wanna take our two outside panels and we want to score them in half. So again, easy math, half on half of four is two. So I'm gonna score at the two inch mark. <coughs> Excuse me. On my other panel, I've got between eight and 12. So the half inch mark is 10. The middle section we're leaving whole. So I'm going to bring this a little closer to the camera. It's dark paper, so it might be hard to see the creases. Let me get the lighting just so. So I've got two inches, four inches, eight inches, 10 inches. Super easy scoring. And that's all we need to do for our card base. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, so again, if we're folding in this way, we're gonna fold, I'm gonna fold my right panel over first. And then that little half panel, I'm folding it back on itself. So we're making this kind of Z shape on our right-hand side. We're gonna open that up and do the exact same thing on the left-hand side. And it doesn't matter which side you do first, I just happen to do the right side first and then fold back on itself again. So when you're all folded flat, it should meet nicely in the center. And the mechanism is going to open up like so. So you can give that a good uh, fold with your bone folder. My little trickle trunk of supplies, I forgot to grab it this morning. And it's slippery. There we go. So I'm gonna get my scoreboard away. We don't even need the scoreboard anymore. So that can just get put away. I'm gonna give this one good burnish on all my folds. And then we can set our card base aside. All right, so as long as you're meeting relatively evenly in the center, that's gonna open up like so. That can tuck aside. All right, I need to prepare my focal or finish preparing my focal point. I am going to stamp this beautiful floral background onto this watercolor piece. Maybe this one, I think I'm gonna do that one. There's a little bit more color to this one. And black ink. So I'm gonna stamp it first and then trim it down to the size that I need. I also need a backer piece for this, which I'm gonna use some gold glitter paper. I need the rubber side. So like I said, you could just use a piece of pattern paper. Um, I know some of the vintage or simple vintage lines from uh, Simple Stories have some really gorgeous um, butterflies and background papers and that kind of thing that you could use for this as well. I, if I remember correctly, our finished size is three and three quarters by five. So let me just get mine stamped down here and we'll trim that down. Because it's a background stamp, I don't have a block big enough. So I'm just using my stamping platform, my really old contraband stamping platform. So there we go. I'll put that aside and clean it later. So I need to trim this down to three and three quarters by five. 
But look how pretty that is just with that watercolor background and that pattern uh, stamped over top of it. Come on. There we go. And it looks like this stamp was made for three and three quarters by five. Maybe a tiny bit smaller. It looks like I'm gonna have a bit of a border, but that's okay. We'll just sort of fudge it around. And I'm gonna cut my background piece, which we want to be four by five and a half. Yeah, because we want it to be the same size as our base. So I'm going to use this gold pretty glitter paper. Oh, I've got two sheets. Let's do five and a half by four. Keep your trimmer handy because we will be coming back to that. So I'm simply going to layer my focal point onto my background. You know, I'm going to make mine a teeny bit smaller just so I've got an even border. Now, the trick with sticking these pieces together is you really want good coverage on your adhesive because we are going to cut this into three strips. So want to make sure I do my math properly. So I'm not going to trim my down. I'm just going to get my score tape and make sure I've got this really stuck down to my background. So if you've got your focal point and your background to your focal point, glue them together with whatever adhesive you like to use best. Um, as long as you want to make sure that you get good stick and coverage so that when we cut it apart, it's all going to stay together. And just make sure everything's sticking. Peel off my backings. Peeling off the backing of my tape, I think, is the hardest part of today's class. And last but not least, and because I really want some good stick, I'm just going to double duty this and do some verticals as well. I'm probably a little on the over overkill side. But in my opinion, nothing is worse than your card falling apart when you send it to someone. Oh, I see we've got some ladies joining us from Ottawa. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you this morning, or at least sort of see you. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's nice to have the sun shining here in Stouffville. Hopefully you have a little bit of sunshine in your life too. I think the forecast is calling for rain, but we'll enjoy the sun while we can. All right, I'm gonna take my focal point and I am going to center it on my background piece as best that I can. There we go. So that is my focal point that is going to go on the front of my card. But like I said, now we need to cut it into three strips. We're five and a half inches tall. Five and a half doesn't divide by three very easily. In fact, very few numbers divide into three easily. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five and a half. If this is my piece of paper, 
which is four by five and a half. What I'm gonna do is I wanna cut a two inch strip out of the middle. That leaves me with two and a half inches left. <clears throat> Excuse me, so my first cut is gonna be at an inch and a half. Then I'm gonna slide it along and cut it at two inches, which should leave me an inch and a half at the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me, one and a half, two, one and a half, and someone can check my math, that should add up to five and a half, but it doesn't. Two, three, four, that's only five. So I need this to be an inch and three quarters. Good thing we sketched it out first. So one and one is two, two is four, five and a half, we're good. When you're cutting these, try and keep them in order so that when we put them back on our card, they stay in the right order. So one and three quarters is our first cut. And this is where I like my guillotine because it cuts through the both layers. So that's one and three quarters. My next cut is gonna be two. And if I measure this last piece, it should be one and three quarters. Hooray! Hooray for math. All right. Let's turn it this way. Let's bring our card over. I'm going to grab a swig of coffee. That's better. Okay. Here is the trick. We are going to put these on our card and they should line up edge to edge. Like so. Let me just bring the camera down just a little bit. Bear with me a second. Hopefully that's a little bit closer and a little bit better. So the trick is the top one and the bottom one, we are gonna glue down to the left panel. The middle one, we're gonna glue down to the right panel. So to start with, I'm gonna take my middle panel out and put it off to the side. I'm going to open this all up. And I only want adhesive on this little section here. So if I turn it over, and I mark where my score line is. I know that I want my my adhesive over here. So let's attach that one first. Staying within my lines. And you want a good stick, but it doesn't have to be overkill like I did to glue these guys together. Fold that in, right side up, right in the corner. The corner ones are easiest. And it should look like that on your left hand, far left hand panel. We're going to do the same thing with our bottom piece. So I'm going to flip it over so that I can mark where my score line is and where I'm going to put my tape. And I feel like I just need a little tiny piece in that corner there. Okay, lining up my corner, lining up my corner, making sure everything's the right way up. And now you can see it's starting to come together. 
The next thing we have to do now is attach our centerpiece. And just like before, we're not, I, I'm going to flip it over because I really just need to mark where this fold is going to be. And I want the glue to go on that right hand side now because we're putting it on the right hand side panel. So I just flipped it over, marked my line, and we'll add our tape. Now this one we won't have corners to line up with. So we will stick this down with our card closed. That way we can get the piece right inside. So let's close it up with your adhesive on your right hand side attaching to your right hand panel just like a puzzle this is going to nest right in there so right now it looks like it is a solid card but when the person who receives it opens it up there's our illusion sorry i'm just seeing the comment about slowing down a little bit my apologies is there anything you'd like me to go over Uh, I just finished cutting the um, the strips. Okay. So I know about the corner, but how did you milk the X and put it on? No problem. Let me. I, I'll start right from attaching the strips in general. Okay. Let, let me. I'm just going to grab a scrap piece so that I can demonstrate. Okay, let me cut. Okay, so that was our four by five and a half. We cut it into one and three quarters, two, and then one and three quarters. So I think everybody's caught up to there. <clears throat> When I was attaching my pieces, the blue side is gonna be my right side. So what I did is I flipped it towards me and just drew a line where that fold was. So, Cause I know I don't want tape on this side. I only want it on this side. So I did that for the top piece. I marked where my fold was. There we go. And I just, uh, for me, I put a little X on that left hand side just so I remembered that was the side I wanted my tape. I applied my tape and then I lined it up with that top left corner and stuck it down. I did the same process with my bottom piece. I flipped it towards me. I drew my line and I made an X just to remind me where to put the tape. This time I lined it up with the bottom left-hand corner. So is everyone good with the left-hand side? Yeah. I see thumbs up, I see nodding heads. All right, that one's pretty straightforward. It is the middle one that is a little bit trickier. On the left-hand side, again, this is my right side up. I did the same thing. I just flipped it towards me and I drew my line. So where my score line is, I drew a little line. It doesn't have to be precise. It's just so you know you don't go way over onto the opposite side. This time, because we're attaching it to the right-hand panel, I put my X on my right-hand side of the paper. Applied my tape. And then I closed my card. And it is gonna be a snug fit, especially if you used heavier paper like I did. So with it closed, we had the two top pieces, top and bottom piece on. I then just stuck it down with the adhesive on the right side to that right panel in the middle. So now it looks like we've put our puzzle piece back together. And now, 
when you look at it all folded, it looks like it's all one card. But when you open it up, and again, mine's a little sticky, I'm gonna have to get my powder tool out. That's where you have that illusion and the card comes apart. All right, I hope everyone's good with that. Like I said, if you're finding that it's a little bit sticky, you can just get out your powder tool. Because it could just be that where the adhesive was that we cut, it's a little bit sticky. So I can just powder this up to make it slide a little bit more. And I'll do the same on this side. There, that's fitting a lot more easily. And now all we're down to is decorating. So I brought, I just brought a little stitched circle that I'm gonna put down here. I brought a punch because I think I'm going to punch a little piece out of my gold here. But there is a key with you're doing something like what I'm doing. And it's where you put your adhesive to stick it down. If you're going across two panels, make sure you only stay stuck to that bottom panel. And that's where it's easier if you open it up. So let me just stamp my sentiment on here. I like this little one that says, you get me. So I'm going to put that right in the center. If I can get my ink open. I am going to because I love this love, love, love this new color. I'm going to ink up my circle a little bit. And that also helps to kind of tie your colors in. So that's good to go. Stick this together. Oh, it's upside down, but that's okay because it's not stuck on my card yet. Actually, what I think I'm going to do, just to make the mechanism move easier, I'm going to, this is together. No, I'm gonna stay with plan A. So when I glue this down, I'm only going to glue it to the bottom panel. That way I make sure that my pieces can still come apart. Sorry, I know I'm low on the camera here. I've only put adhesive, oh, it's not showing up very well, white on white, just on that bottom half so that I can stick it right here. And then everything goes together like so. Yes, Rosalind, this would make a perfect Mother's Day card um depending on what patterns you do i mean father's day is coming up so we can get ahead and do a father's day card uh yes we can get the powder tool we are currently out of stock but we do have more on order uh yes it is refillable so this little piece um twists off and it's just baby powder or cornstarch inside so you can absolutely refill it i will tell you i've had mine for years and have never had to refill it so uh, once you have it, you probably don't need to refill it unless you, you know, unless you're blessed enough to do tons and tons of crafting and you go through it a little bit faster than I do. So that is our illusion three panel card. You could then 
put a, you know, because I've got dark paper, I would probably put a piece of white inside so I could write my message. Or if you have a beautiful white or even gold um, pen, you could write on it from there. But really easy, simple cuts. Once you get the hang of it, and as I often say with interactive cards, the number one key is where you put the glue and where you don't. So yes, Kathy, with the inside of the card, what I would probably do is, and again, to keep my gold going, I would probably cut a piece of gold to go inside and cut a white mat to go inside and maybe put another uh, stamped sentiment or just write my own message on the inside. You can decorate the inside as much as you decorate the outside. My only caution, um, especially with this particular card, you want to keep it flat. So I wouldn't put a lot of raised gems or foam tape or anything on the inside because when you close it, if it's too bulky on the inside, it won't close nice and flat. So keep the inside flat as much as possible. You could even just use a shimmer brush or ink your edges. Lots of great little techniques you can use with the stuff you already have just to punch up the color a little bit. So thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you.